Can you tap three people around you? Tell that person God is in this place. God is in this place. Can we give the Lord a big hand once again? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning once again. Welcome back to our home here at Lakeshore Hall. Marami salamat for keeping updated, for following our page and knowing and following wherever we go. Alam ko, last week hindi natin sinabi kung hindi tayo sigurado kung saan. But still, you came here, you are in this place because you are faithful, you are committed. Tapigin mo ko, tabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, you're committed. Yan. Kahit lumapad siya, committed yan. Yan ang totoo. Are you ready to learn from the Word of God once again today? Let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Together, let's make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hands and pray this with me. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, I will welcome you to the talk two of our series, Creed. Sabi nyo nga, Creed? Last week, we've talked about conviction, wherein we, we told you that conviction, the creed defines who you are. Today, we are going to talk about communion. Sabi nyo nga, communion. We are going to talk about the body of Christ, the church, the Catholic church, tayong lahat. Yan ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. And our one big message today is you have a family. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo yan. You have a family. Medyo mahaba yung intro ko ngayon. So, can I request you to please be seated for a while? And maya-maya patatayin ko rin kayo before we go into our prayer. But our intro is quite longer today, so para medyo makapahinga kayo. Alam ko matagal na kayong nakatayo. Alright. Sige. Tapikin mo ulit katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, you have a family. Last week, sino sa inyo nandito last week? Ay, wala kayo dito last week. Nandun kayo sa TCU last week. Kaya taas sa kamay. Those of you who are with us last week, we talked about conviction and we said that the creed defines who you are. Sabi nyo nga, the creed defines who you are. But communion, in this talk, we are going to define where you belong. Because the creed defines where you belong. Kung saan ka napapabilang. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, have you ever been a fan or a believer of anything? Sino sa inyo dito naging fan na kayo ng kahit na anong bagay? Taas nga ang kamay. Siguro K-drama, yung iba fan ng milk tea, yung Yung, sino sa inyo dito ang fan ng Apple products? Taas ang kamay. Ayan, Apple products. Ay, konti lang yung mayayaman dito. Ayan. Yung iba siguro Android. Pero alam nyo, meron kayong mga kilalang Apple fanboys? Yung talagang, yung, yung laptop nila, Mac, yung kanilang cellphone, uh, Mac, yung kanilang, uh, yung kan- meron pa silang iPad, tapos lahat meron sila. Meron pang iPad iPad Touch, nagkaroon din sila nun. Yung lahat talaga, tapos every time na magpalit, nag upgrade sila. And you see, we can learn something about fans and fan groups. And you see, malalaman mo kapag ang isang tao ay believer ng isang bagay, pag siya ay isang fanboy, alam nyo kung paano, merong apat na signs. How many signs? The first sign is this, kapag fan ka ng isang bagay, you are proud to be associated with the brand or the group you are fanboying in. Tama ba? Kaya minsan yung mga Apple fanboys na minsan nang yayabang yung mga yan. Bakit? Dala-dala nila yung cellphone. Tapos nakatayo sila sa MRT. Maya-maya kumalag yung MRT. Anong gagawa nila? Ginaganito nila sa mukha nung katabi nila. Ganun talaga. Pinapakita ko. Kumalag na naman. Babalik na naman. Di ba? Tapos ang feeling nila dahil naka-iPhone sila. Grabe. Mas maganda. Grabe. Ang yabang nilalabas yung phone. 
Bakit? Kasi proud sila. Hindi naman dahil talaga mayabang siya. Kundi proud sila. Bakit? Apple to eh. Tapos minsan yung iba, lalo na yung mga naka-iPhone X ngayon, grabe. Naka-AirPods pa palagi. Di ba? Di ba? Minsan yung AirPods parang labo, no? parang may kuntil dito. Tapos ano, naka-AirPods yan. Ang mahal ng AirPods yan. Pero nakikinig yan ng Spotify. Pero free, free yung Spotify niyan. Walang pambayad ng premium yan. Pero bakit? Naka-Apple siya. Ano pa? Yung mga Apple fanboys, malalaman nyo. Second thing is this. You know, if a guy is a fan of something, if you can't stop talking about it. Tama ba? Pakikita mo, wala siya ibang pinag-usapan sa kanyang Facebook post. Uy, magpo-post siya. nag na yung prototype ng iPhone 15. Grabe, iPhone 10 pa lang, iPhone 15 na yung inaabangan. Lalabas sa 2025, super high-tech. Grabe yung camera kasing linaw na nung P30 Pro ng Huawei. Ganon. Bakit? Ganon ka-delayed, pero fan pa rin siya. But you can stop talking about it. Number three is this. You defend it against all haters. Tama ba? Kapag fan ka ng isang bagay. For example, meron mga nagsasabi sa'yo, eh, hindi naman maganda yung Apple, mahal-mahal pa. Ang sasabihin mo, hmm? Hater ka lang, di mo lang afford. <laughs> ah, di ba? Tapos minsan, yung iba, ang nagagalit sa Apple, bakit? Ayoko na mag-Apple, bakit? Kasi tinanggal nila yung auxilia report. Tama ba? Naka-thunder, naka-thunder port pa. Thunder, ano ba? Tama ba? Thunder port, thunderbolt. Sorry, wala akong Apple eh. Ayan, ako, hater pala yun. <laughs> Samsung kasi ako eh. So, yung ganun, di ba? Dinidefend nila. Okay lang yan. Yung AirPods mo, baka mawala. Ano sasabihin nila? Eh, yung AirPods ko, okay lang. May solusyon na ang Apple dyan. Nagbebenta sila ng string na tigwa $100. Yung ganun. They will defend it against all haters. And the last but not the least is this. You know, a person is a fan of something if you are happy to see another fanboy. Tama ba? Pag may nakakita, uy, grabe, naka-apple ka. Dino, kore, naka-apple ako. Grabe, alam, alam, alam mo na yung prototype na lalabas sa susunod. Pinag-uusapan ninyo. Tapos, maghanap pa kayo ng ibang fanboy, tapos magiging grupo kayo. Now, why am I sharing this to you? Tanong nyo sa akin, bakit? Because, these fanboys, why are they like this? Minsan parang kulto na. Bakit parang baliw na baliw sila sa produkto? Because they believe in Apple so much. And you see, naturally, if you believe in something, you will find other believers too, and you will tend to stick with them, with each other. Napansin niyo yun? Hindi ba't ganun din yung ating creed? That's another gift of our creed. Because creeds creates community. Kaya na-create, lumakas ang ating church because we have a creed. And when you have a creed, it creates community. You see, last week we've talked about belief, beliefs impacting our behavior. But today you are going to learn how beliefs impact brotherhood. Sabi nyo nga, brotherhood. Pero ito lang ang warning, ha? Beliefs by themselves, they are not enough. They can only take you so far. Bakit? Yang mga fans, they will only be there while it's fun. Yung mga loyalists, they will always be loyal if it's fun. But the moment it's no longer fun, believer, believers will fall away. For example, yung mga Apple fans. Yung iba sa kanila, solid Apple fans. Pero nung namatay si Steve Jobs, biglang nabawasan. Bakit hindi na fan? Hindi na si Steve Jobs. Tapos nung biglang lumalabas na yung magagandang produkto ng mga kalaban, katulad ng sobrang linaw na camera ng, ng Huawei, na pagka mo, talagang kita yung pores mo up to the last level, pati blackheads mo. Yung ganun, nabawasan yung fans sila. Bakit? Kasi hindi na fun. But you see, that's why our creed is different from any other creed and beliefs. Why? Yung mga Apple loyalists, they won't die for Apple. They don't die for Apple. But, can you say but? In the past 2,000 years, millions of martyrs have died because of our creed. Bakit? Kasi they believe in it so much. Correct me if I'm wrong, ha? But the last time I checked, yung pagiging martyr, hindi siya nakakatuwa. Tama o tama? Gusto nyo malaman kung bakit? Tanong mo sa katabi mo, martyr yan eh. Diba? Sa pag-ibig nga lang. But you see, yung mga martyr, na alam, kilala natin yung mga santo na nauna sa atin, ano, grabe sila. 
Nag, namatay para sa creed natin. Nagpakain sa leon, napugutan ng ulo, nasunog, nilunod. That's why our creed is so powerful. Bakit? Because Jesus' followers remained followers even if it was not fun. Ang tanong ito, why did they stay? Bakit maraming namatay for our creed? Tanong nyo sa akin, bakit? Dalawang powerful reasons. The first powerful reason is this, because they were not just followers of the creed, of a creed. They are following Christ in the creed. Hindi lang yung belief ang pinaniniwalaan. Ang pinaniniwalaan, si Kristo. And beliefs, you see, it can come and go. Pero si Lord, He will never go away. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe in this. When you follow a person, it's much more powerful. Tama ba? Let me give you an example. Ha? Tayong mga tao, ayaw natin ang sumusunod sa rules. Tama ba? Na, sa mga nakasulat na instructions. Example. Ha? Halimbawa, meron isang, meron isang bench. Tapos nakasulat, wet paint. Wet paint. Ano gagawin ninyo? Ay, basa nga. <laughs> Di ba? Nakasulat, meron nakasulat sa pader. Bawal umihi dito. Putol, secret. Kaya, <laughs> kung iihi ka, humarap ka, huwag kang try door, kita sa CCTV. Anong, anong mangyayari? Doon sa, kung saan may karatulat, doon pinaka, mapanghi. Bakit? We don't like following rules, instructions, creeds. But we love following people. Because people follow people. And our creed, we are not just believing in it because we believe in a creed. We believe in it because we follow Jesus in the creed. Am I making sense here? Number two reason why they died for the, the creed is this. They did not belong to the creed. They belong to Christ's family in the creed. Ah, yan yung mas maganda. Meron ng community aspect. They belong to a living, breathing church. And let me show you anong itsura ng early local church nung unang panahon, nung pagkamatay ni Jesus. Ganito po ang itsura as Luke described it in, his, in Acts. Basahin natin ito. Ayan. Can we all read this together? This is our word for today. Together? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Grabe, no? Sino bang gumagawa nung ganyan? May imagine nyo yun? They share everything. Kain sila ng kain. Ano pang ginagawa? They sold their property kapag merong nangangailangan. Sino ang gagawa niyan? Ay, hindi lang kaibigan ang gagawa niyan. Pamilya ang gagawa niyan. Tama ba? E buti na lang, wala pang pustiso nung araw. Kundi baka naghiraman din sila ng pustiso. Diba? But you see, that's the kind of church that we have. That's the early church. Ito ang problema. Tanong nyo sa akin, ano? The problem is this. Sadly, the churches today, local churches today, communities, parishes, sometimes, they are very far away from the Jerusalem church. Bakit? Because most local churches today, they are no longer families. Ano na sila? They are gasoline station churches. Anong ibig ko sabihin ng gasoline station church? A gasoline station church is this. Di ba ano bang gasolinahan? Pupunta ka doon, titigil ka, mag-fill up ka, papagas ka, pagkatapos na naaalis ka na. Sadly, some local churches are like that. They come inside, they walk in, get their spirits nourished, makikinig sa misa, mag mag magkukumunyon, they will worship, makikinig ng teaching, pagkatapos na uuwi na. Tapos di man lang niya kinausap yung katabi. Parang yung iba sa atin dito, punta kayo dito, yung inuupuan mo dyan ka naman talaga palagi nakaupo. Yung katabi mo dyan din siya palagi nakaupo. Pero hanggang ngayon, di mo pa rin siya kilala. Tama ba? Kasi minsan yun ang temptation natin. Pupunta lang tayo, ah, ang ganda ng talk, grabe, ang galing ng talk ni Brother Felden, bless the bless ako, grabe, naiyak pa nga ako. Pagkatapos noon, uwi na. Sana ito, here's my, here's my prayer. I wish that we change that attitude and that culture. Why? Because that's what we are trying to do here at the feast. Gusto natin maging pamilya. Sabi nyo nga pamilya. 
Kaya nga ina-encourage natin ang bawat isa na ano, umatend ng light groups, ng small groups, because that's where real church happens. You journey together. Ay, nako. Ang sarap po paging part ng light group. In fact, ako po, I, I have two important light groups. Ito po, ang unang light group na importante sa akin. Ito po, ang light group po namin, ito po ang small group namin composed of other feast builders. Yan, si Brother Mike, si Brother Jan Silan, si Brother Drew, si Brother Monching ng Marikina. Yan po, kasama ng mga asawa namin. Tapos, together, we journey. Nag- pinag-uusapan namin problema. Hindi lang sa ministry, ha? Pinag-uusapan din namin problema sa pamilya. How can we support one another? Pag meron nagkakasala, binabatukan namin. Ganyan, tigil mo na yan. Pagka merong victory na nangyari sa kanya, we celebrate about it. But another thing, another blessing for me, and this is an important light group for me, is our leaders and council and pillars light group here at the feast. Ito po ang top leaders ng ating feast dito sa Bikutan. At alam nyo po, hindi lang po kami nagmi-meeting. Nagla-light group din kami. We journey with one another. And I'm so blessed kasi yung mga leaders natin dito sa feast, hindi ko lang sila leader. Pamilya ko talaga sila. Kapag mayroong problema, sa kanila ako lumalapit. We share with one another. Yung huli naming light group, ay grabe. Eh dahil puro couples kami, ang, ang sharing namin, puro tungkol sa mga rekola mo namin sa asawa namin. Tapos nakakatuwa din kasi yung abin nyo ko para magreklamo ko sa asawa ko. Yung din abin nyo ng asawa ko para magreklamo siya sa akin. Tapos yung pala lahat sila may reklamo sa kanilang asawa. Pero ang ending ito maganda. Lahat kami, hindi, ayusin nyo yan. Bakit? We journey with one another. At ito nakakatuwa. Merong iba sa amin, may, may edad na. Hindi ko nasasabihin sila Tita Daisy yun, tsaka sa Tito Guy Fernandez. Pero ang ganda nung dynamics, magkakaiba yung edad. Pero natututo kami sa bawat isa. Sila talaga yung source ng wisdom namin. Bakit? Eh, syempre, sila yung nauna na sa amin. But you see, that's the wonderful thing about the light group. Eh, anyway, meron pala kami isa doon, member single. Ayun, so, wala lang. Nainggit lang siya doon kasi puro couples kami doon. Eh. Si, si Gladys, ingit na ingit siya. So, but that's what I want you to happen to you. I want you to join the small groups, the light groups. Because in light Light groups, we do life together. Kapag may nahihirapan, nagtutulungan. Kapag may problema, nagdadamayan. And when something good happens, we celebrate each other's milestones and victories. Amen? Tapikin mo ulit ang katabi mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, you have a family. Can I invite you to stand up? Sabi sa inyo haba ng intro. Intro pa lang yun, ha? But very substantial. Let's pray. Close your eyes. Bow down your heads. Put your hands towards your chest. Repeat this prayer after me together. Father in heaven, thank you for the gift of our creed, for the gift of our church. And because I belong to your family, I know I am never alone. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise you, Jesus. Speak to us today. As you sit down, tell the person beside you, you have a family. Today, I'd like to, since we are talking about the creed, I'd like to give four connections between the creed and what it means to be a family. The first one is this. I will relate the first proclamation that we say in the creed. I believe in God. Sabi nyo, I believe in God. I believe in God. Actually, umpisa pa lang ng creed natin. Umpisa pa lang, we are uttering an act of humility, words of humility. Because when we say, I believe in God, you are saying na hindi ako magaling. I am not God. God is God. Hindi ako dapat ang bida. Si Lord ang bida. I'm not the boss. God is the boss. And you see, my dear friends, yan ang importante. Kasi hindi nyo napansin sa buhay natin, let me apply it in our own lives. 
Do you know why there are conflicts in marriages, in your families, in your companies, in your church, in your friendships? Alam niyo kung bakit? Alam niyo sa akin bakit? Because usually, someone has too much ego. Sabi niyo nga, ego. Ano ba yung ego? Ego, let me put it in a simpler term, ego is an exaggerated sense of self-importance. Yung feeling mo, ikaw dapat ang pinakamahalaga. Ikaw ang mas mahalaga kesa sa ibang tao. Sino mga may asawa dito? Taas ang kamay. Ayan. Sa mga mag-asawa, nag-aaway ba kayong mag-asawa? Siyempre, di ba? Para saan pang nag-asawa ka kung wala kang... Kaya ka nga nag-asawa para meron kang aawayin. At meron kang sisisihin. Di ba? But you see, kaming mag-asawa, madalas namin pinagtatalunan, alam nyo, ang debate namin, halos gabi-gabi, five years na po kaming kasal, ha? ay kung sino magpapatay ng ilaw. Usually, ano ang rule? Sino magpapatay ng ilaw? Sino? Yung malapit. Tama? Tama? Sa aming mag-asawa, ang mas malapit ay yung misis ko. At syempre, naturally, logically, ang sasabihin ko, ikaw ang mas malapit, ikaw ang magpatay. At higit sa lahat, kaya ko matulog ng nakabukas ng ilaw. Ikaw hindi. So, ikaw ang magpatay. Pero nung sasabihin niya, pagod ako. At ako siyempre sasagot, ah, ikaw lang ba ang pagod? Pagod din ako. Nagtrabaho ako. Buong araw ako nagbigay ng talk. Ay, sasagot naman siya, eh, ikaw nag-talk ka lang. Ako nag-alaga ako ng bata. Ay, palit tayo. Gusto mo ikaw mag-alaga ng bata. Mas, ako na lang magtatrabaho. Pag may makeup gig kasi siya, ano, para sa kanya, freedom yon dun sa kanyang anak. Bakit? Kasi ang kulit talaga ng anak namin. Pero, sige, ako na lang. Sabi, ako na lang, ako na lang ang magtatrabaho. Ikaw mag-alaga ng bata, palit tayo. Pagod din ako. Ayaw. Ano sasabihin niya? Mas pagod ako. O kaya sasabihin ko, hindi, mas pagod ako. Ay, nako, ito ang problema eh. Kaya nag-aaway, nagkakakwentahan. Ito ang tanong ko, paano mo malalaman kung sino ang mas pagod sa inyo? Makukwenta mo ba talaga yun? Bakit? Ilalupat kong magkaiba yung ginawa ninyo. And that's what happens when we begin to count. Kapag tinutuos mo, binibilang mo, sino yung mas nagbigay, sino yung mas napagod dyan, nagkakaroon ng away. Eh kasi naman, nauso kasi yung kung ano-anong kalokohan na kasuitan natin, di ba? I love you, I love you more. Anong I love you? I love you, I love you more. Nakukwenta ba kung sino mas nagmamahal? Why don't you just love each other? Period. Kasi ang tunay na nagmamahal, hindi nagbibilang. Tama? Eh, problema, nagbibilang tayo. So ang ending namin, eto na. Siyempre, pag tumanggi siya, hindi ako pwede, ayoko magpatay ng ilaw, pagod din ako. Eh, siyempre, ha! Kung di po ninyo alam, alpha male ako. Ha! Ang mga alpha male, ay nako, ayaw na ayaw na cha-challenge yung pagkalalaki nila. Yung pagka-alpha nila. Eh, alpha ako. Eh, syempre, ang alpha, tandaan nyo to, mga mister, tandaan nyo ito. Ang tunay na alpha, lahat ng ayaw ng misis niya, yun ang ginagawa niya. Tama. So, anong ginawa ko? Pinatay ko yung ilaw. Ayaw niya kasi patayin eh. You see, That's the only way kapag may nagpakumbaba. But seriously, I'd like to honor my wife. Why? Because there are days when she works the whole day. Tapos ako rin minsan nagtatrabaho. Pero at the end of the day, kahit gusto ko alagaan yung anak ko, yung anak ko sa kanya pa rin gusto pumunta. But she will always lovingly take care of our, of our son. Kahit pagod na, pagod na talaga siya. Tapos ako talaga, oh, God bless you. Ikaw kasi gusto talaga ng anak mo, pero thank you. Yung ganun talaga, grabe talaga yung misis ko. Tapos, minsan, ano, alam nyo, ako nandito ako sa stage every Sunday, uh, uh, hindi po, uh, mas pagod po yung misis ko. Paano ko nalaman? Kahapon, merong couples gathering kami. Tapos, eh, dahil hindi naman ako yung speaker, pwede kong habul-habulin yung anak ko. Habang nagko-couples gathering kami, ako yung tagahabol ng anak ko. Tapos sila nag-i-event doon, meron kaming ginagawa, meron silang games. Tapos ako pagod na pagod na. Tapos na-realize ko, sabi ko, grabe, ang hirap pala ginagawa ng misis ko pagka nagtotok ako sa feast. Bakit siya yung tagahabol? Yung misis ko nandyan lang, palagi. Minsan hindi nakakapakinig ng talk yan. 
but she lovingly does it for me. Bakit? Nagparaya. My dear friends, here's my point. You need humility in your life. Because no humility, no unity. Sabihin nyo ngayon? And that's what God's family is all about. The church, us, the feast will not exist as well without humility. Alam nyo kaya ako tuwan ako dito sa feast, kaya lumalaki ang feast natin kasi humility is our culture. Bigyan ko kayo ng example. Our founder for 30 years, actually, hindi naman nagbago ang founder, di ba? For, siya ang top leader for 30 plus years, 39 years, is Brother Bo Sanchez. But just last last month, he stepped down. Pinasa niya yung leadership. Wala na siyang leadership position ngayon. Malakas pa si Brother Bo, ha? Ay, ang galing-galing pa rin niya, pero pinasa niya, bakit? Humble, eh. Naniniwala siya na kaya ng mas bata sa kanya patakbuhin itong community natin. Ganun pong klase ng leader si Brother Bo Sanchez. Kaya kami mga feast builder, ang biruan namin, bawal may mas mayabang, bawal mayabang dito, ha? Kasi pag mayabang ka, litang, lutang na lutang ka. Mahihiya ka talaga sa sobrang humble ni Brother Bo kapag mayabang ka. Kaya pag may mayabang sa amin yung fish builder, binabato ka namin, huwag ka nga mayabang, may ka sa leader natin, ang humble. You see, that's our culture here at the feast. Even here in Feast Bikutan. Ako po ang fish builder dito. Ang sinasabi ko, pag sinabi ko, sinusunod ng mga leaders, ng mga servants. Pero ang totoo po, hindi po ang pinakamagaling dito. Marami pong mas magaling sa akin dito. Sa finance, wala akong alam dyan. Mas magaling yung finance head natin. Pero pagka meron akong ni-request, meron akong sinabi, susunod sila. Sa discipleship, hindi ako pinakamagaling. Ang mas magaling sa akin, si Oying. Tsaka si Lyra. Pero pag meron akong ni-request, susunod sila. Ganyan sila. Yung, 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 isa, yung social media natin, yung mga posts natin, nagva-viral, etc. Grabe, one, almost 1 million views yung isang video. Ang daming shares ng mga posts natin. Hindi ako pinakamagaling. Bakit? Ang may nag-aayos niyan, si Gladys. You see, hindi ako pinakamagaling dito pero they are following the lead of a crazy man just like me. Hindi naman ako magaling pero sila magaling. But because there's humility, they are humble enough, the feast is flourishing. Kaya palakpakan naman natin yung mga leaders at servants who are humble enough to do this. Kayong mga attendees, enjoy na enjoy kayo dyan, nakaupo. Presko. Pero ang hindi niyo alam, merong mga humble na servants na uuna nag-aayos ng upuan, inaayos lahat yan, pinagpe-pray bawat upuan, bago kayo pumunta dyan, ang pinagpe-pray nila, sana bumait yung nakaupo dito. Tapos winiwisikan pa ng ano yan, ng intercessory ministry. Kaya kung medyo basayang naupuan ninyo, alam na this, di ba? Mas makasalanan, mas maraming winiwisik dyan eh. Yung ganyan. But you see, some of the servants here, Lahat na nagsiset up, yung ibang marshals dyan, they are bosses. They, meron silang mga kanya-kanyang posisyon sa ibang kumpanya. Sila yung mga alpha din. But you see, they are humbly doing this to serve God's people. Palakpakan natin yung mga humble na servants natin dito sa feast. Ayan. That's number one, humility. Number two is this, when we say, I believe in God the Father. That line itself says that when we say, I believe in God the Father, ibig sabihin, we are brothers and sisters. In fact, in Genesis, nung si Cain, he killed his brother Abel, si Lord hinanap si Abel. Abel, where are you? And Cain asked God, Am I my brother's keeper? Ayan. Tanungin mo sa katabi mo, Am I my brother's keeper? Minsan yan ang problema natin. Sarili na nating kapatid, hindi pa natin inaalagaan. Ito nga nakakalungkot eh. Minsan, mas mabait pa tayo sa mga kaibigan natin kaysa sa mga kapatid natin. Tama? Tinatamahan ka na ba? Hey, let me give you an example. Kami po, lima po kami magkakapatid. Tapos lahat po ng kapatid ko nagsuserve sa feast. And... Four of my other, uh, sorry, so, ilan pala na kapatid? So, lima kami, merong akong apat na kapatid. Yung tatlo doon sa, tat, sa apat kong kapatid, nagsaserve dito sa Feast Bikutan. They're also leaders here. And 
alam nyo, kapag ikaw ay, pag magkapatid, mahirap yun. Ikaw yung leader, tapos yung kapatid mo, servant. So may utos ka, eh minsan ng mga kapatid mo, minsan ayaw, ayaw rin sumunod, di ba? Nag-aaway ayaw, nagpapasahan nga ng utos pag nanay ang nag-uutos. Eh. Lalo pa kung kapatid ka lang at ikaw nag-uutos. Alam nyo yan. And one time, nag-aaway kami nung isa kong kapatid. Hindi ko nasasabihin si Vernon yon pero si Vernon yon Yung ating mu- music head, saka ang, ang isa sa ating events pillar head. So anyway, nag-aaway kami. May pinapagawa ako. Tapos siya, kinukwestiyon bakit ko pinapagawa yon Tapos ayaw niyang sumunod. So siyempre, siyempre, ako, I, I'm trying my best to make the feast uh, grow. So ako talaga, siyempre, na-challenge na naman yung pagka-alpha ko. Di ba? Na-challenge na naman yung pagiging leader ko. So ngayon, nag-away kami. So, ang sabi ko sa kanya, nag na ako, gaya naman kayo eh. Kung sino naman yung, kung sino pa yung mga kapatid ko, yun pa yung ayaw sumunod sa akin. Ganun, talagang, Ay, and mind you, hindi ganun pagkakasabi namin. Yung, ano, seven Sunday levels yung away namin. Yung talagang nagsisigawan. Gar- grabe intense na yung away namin. Nasaksihan nyo ng mga kapatid namin. Tagaawat pa nga sila eh. Ganyan eh. Tapos ganyan naman kayo. Hindi naman, kung sino pa yung kapatid, ayaw pa yung, ayaw yung sundin. Kayo pa naman yung kapatid ko. Alam mo, sagot sa akin. Grabe, seven Sundays levels nga eh. Ang sabi ito, buti pa yung mga servants, mas mabait ka. Ganyan naman tingin mo sa akin eh. Servant mo lang ako. Ganun. Sabay walling na ganun. Siyempre mga kapatid ko, tama na, tama na, ganun. Hindi, hindi naman ganun eh. But you see, nung pagkasabi niya sa akin ron, it hit me. Sabi ko, o nga no? Bakit ba minsan mas mabait pa ako dun sa mga servant sa feast? Kaysa sa sarili kong kapatid. You see, how about you in your families? Are you your brother's keeper? But let's extend it a bit more. Are you your brother's and sister's keeper, not just in the family, but in the family of God? You see, ako mahal ko po ang mga kapatid ko. Ay, nako, kapag, ay, kapag may nang away dyan, aawayin ko din. Gaya ng tunay na kapatid, di ba? At higit sa lahat, kapag may nang asar dyan, hindi ako papayag. Bakit? Kasi ako lang ang pwedeng mang asar sa kanya. Gaya ng tunay na kapatid. But you see, Mahal natin ang kapatid natin, paglalaban natin ng patayan niyan eh. Kaya sana ito ang prayer ko. Hindi lang yan sa pamilya natin, kundi sa buong body of Christ. Sige, tingnan mo yung kapatid, katabi mo. Kapatid mo yan eh. Kapatid mo yan, kahit di mo kamuka. Kahit di mo kaugali. Kahit Team Julia yan at Team Bea ka, kapatid mo pa rin yan. Kailangan mong tanggapin. <laughs> yung ganyan. At ito ang maganda. Ang pamilya, kahit magkamali, kahit magkasakitan, tatanggapin at papatawarin pa rin ang isa't isa. Amen? Amen. Number three, I believe in Jesus Christ. Sabi nga Jesus Christ. Bakit importante ito? Alam nyo, naniniwala ko, si Jesus lang ang nagpapastay. Grasya lang ng Diyos, si Lord lang ang nagpapastay at nagpapaglaganap ng ating Catholic Church, ng ating church, ng ating buong body of Christ. And you see, I have been serving in community for many years. At alam nyo kung ano ang masaya sa buhay community? Tanong nyo sa akin ano? Ang nagpapasaya sa buhay community ay yung mga tao. Bakit? Kasi nagiging pamilya mo na sila, yung mga ka- brother, sister mo dito sa community, nagiging ninong-ninang ng mga anak mo, tapos later on, sila yung magiging, tro- yung mga anak yung magiging magkakaibigan din. Talagang you build your life around them. You journey with them. At ito nakakatuwa. Nung yung tatay ko, nung na-heart attack siya, ito rang, li- recently lang, sino ang tumulong? Yung mga feasters din. Nakabuo kami ng malaking amount. Bakit? Ang daming tumulong sa amin. Bakit? Kasi pamilya na. That's the beauty of the church. The people around it. But, etong tanong ko sa inyo, alam nyo ba, what makes community life difficult? Ano nagpapahirap? Tanong nyo sa akin, ano? Mas malakas ba dyan? Ano? Yung mga tao din. Bakit? Dito sa community, sa church, you will meet all sorts of crazy people. Some people are selfish. Some people are hot-headed. 
mainitin, masakit ang ulo, masakit magsalita. Yung iba, insensitive. Yung iba naman, sobrang sensitive. Pusong mamon. Bigyan ko kayo example, one time, di ba, bumabati ako dyan sa labas, nagde-thank you ako, nagpe-pray ko yung mga gusto, magpa-pray sa akin, may lumapit sa akin. Babae, sabi sa akin, galit ka ba sa akin, Brother Velden? Sabi ko, sa loob-loob ko, hindi nga kami masyadong close, paano akong magagalit dito? Sabi sa kanya, hindi naman. Bakit mo naman nasabi? Hindi mo kasi ako binate. Last week, nandun lang ako, dinadaan-daanan mo lang ako, hindi mo ako binate. So, ang sagot ko, sorry ah, Baka hindi kasi kita nakita, hindi ko sinasadya. Sabi niya, imposible, hindi mo ako nakita. Sorry, baka talaga hindi kita nakita talaga, promise. Sabi niya, yun nga yung problema eh, hindi mo ako nakikita. <laughs> Drama! <laughs> diba? Eh sabi ko sa kanya, eh baka kasi busy, nagre-rehearse ako ng talk sa isip ko, kaya hindi kita napansin. So anyway, sabi ko, pasensya ka na talaga, hindi ko sinasadya. The following week, eto na, nakita ko na naman siya, sabi ko, ha! Si siguraduhin ko, babatiin ko siya. So pagdaan niya dito, malayo pa lang naka-eye contact na akong ganyan. Paglapit, sabi ko sa kanya, "Hi, sister ganyan." Ang sagot niya sa akin, hmm? "Kaya mo lang naman ako binati kasi pinaalala ko sa iyo last week." Ano ba talaga kuya? 'Di ba? Ayoko na sa earth. <laughs> Alam niyo, isa lang 'yan sa mga example na nagpapahirap ng buhay community. But you know why I'm still here? Alam nyo, ang daming mga masasakit sa ulo na tao dito sa feast, sa community. But alam nyo, why am I still here? Tanong nyo sa akin, bakit? Because Jesus served me first. Jesus served me first. Alam nyo, may pangapagkakataon. Sa creed, we say, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. This church, the body of Christ, this community here at the Feast as well, this is the messy and imperfect family of God. And it will only be possible because of God's forgiveness. Ay, naku, puro makasalanan po ang mga tao dito sa Feast. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, makasalanan yan. Pero tingnan mo rin yung sarili mo, makasalanan ka din. Alam nyo, kaya lang naman nag-work ang church, ang community, itong Feast, hindi dahil sa perfect ang mga tao dito, kundi dahil willing magpatawad ang mga tao dito. Amen? Kaya ako iniisip ko na lang, pag may nagkamali sa akin, ay, if God has forgiven us, how can we not forgive one another? Eh kasi, truth be told, maraming nakakainis dito, maraming nakakabuisit na tao dito sa community, maraming makasalanan dito, pero ang pinakamas kasalanan actually dito, yung taong nakatayo dito sa harap. Ako po, pag naiisip ko, grabe naman ito. Sama naman ang ugaling ito. Sama ng, sama ang, ang sakit magsalita. So maalala ko, ako rin pala minsan masakit din ako magsalita. Well, grabe naman ito. Grabe ang kasalanan nito. Gastador, grabe ang pera nito. Eh, pero naalala ko, dati pala akong sugarol. Binago lang ni Lord yung buhay ko. Well, grabe naman ito. Nang bababae pa, nang lalalaki. Well, a- ako, naalala ko. Teka lang, dati din ha. Nagkamali din ako sa girlfriend ko noon ha. Nang babae din ako noon ha. Kaya, pag naaalala ko yun, doon na ako biglang nagme-mellow down. Magpapatawad. You see, the church is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. But the more important thing is this. When you get healed, don't forget that you were once broken. That's why be kind to those who are sinning and broken so that one day, they can be healed just like you. Kaya pag minsan na nagsabi sa inyo, fish ka ng fish, sama pa rin ang ugali mo. Ay sabi mo lang sa kanya, imagine mo na lang kung di ako nagfi-feast. Mas masama ugali ko. Diba? Kaya nga tayo kailangan umaattend sa ganito. Nagiging part ng simbahan. Bakit? Kasi doon tayo unti-unting binabago ng Diyos. Amen? Ayan. Be patient with one another. Number four is this, and this is the last one. The last connection is when we say, I believe in the communion of saints. Actually, before niyan, meron din, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. May nagtanong sa akin, brother, naniniwala naman ako kay Jesus. nag attend pa nga ako ng mga ibang born-again churches kasi gusto ko doon, maganda yung praise and worship nila doon. Ang tanong niya sa akin, why be Catholic if I can be just Christian? Natanong niyo na ba yun? Ang, ang contention pa ng iba, Pare-pareho lang naman yan. 
Jesus din naman yan. Si Lord pa din naman yan. Let me tell you why. The gift of the Catholic Church is this. Tanong nyo sa akin ano? It's called authority. Sabi nyo nga, authority. Jesus, when he, when he, before he died, he passed on the building of the kingdom to his disciple. Anong pangalan? Si Peter. Sabi niya, Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. You will be the rock. Ikaw ang magiging bato on which I will build my church. So sa kanya ipinasa. So, importante sa atin yung authority of teaching kasi kapag, tandaan nyo ito ah, ang contention ng mga ibang kapatid nating Kristiano is that everything that they preach is Bible-based. But you see, the Bible is not enough in itself. Ha? I mean, it's complete, pero hindi lahat ng, nakasula, hindi lahat ng kailangan nating malaman ay nakasulat sa Bible. Yun ang tinatawag nilang sola scriptura. The Bible alone, the Word alone. You see, the reason is this. In fact, bago natsulat yung Biblia, ang nagsulat niyan, sino? Tanong saan sino? Yung simbahan. Sila Peter. Yung mga bishops nung unang panahon. Sila, nauna yung community, nauna yung oral tradition, yung mga tradisyon na ginagawa bago po, bag, test, bago nagkaroon ng Biblia. And so, here's the thing. Case in point, merong isang instance sa Acts of the Apostles, nagkaroon sila ng problema. Kasi si Peter, he was tasked to, he was tasked to preach to the Jews. Si Paul, he was tasked to preach to the Gentiles, sa mga non-Jews. So maganda, lumalaki yung church. Ito na ang problema. May mga Gentiles na nagtanong kay Peter, tsaka kay Paul. Paul, kailangan pa bang magpa-circumcise para maging kristyano? Para maging part ng church ninyo? Eh, ito ang problema. Take note, yung mga hudyo na naging kristyano, naturally, dahil ang mga hudyo sinisircumcise sila, nung binaptay sila, tuli na sila. Circumcise na sila. Ngayon, tinatanong ng mga Gentiles, kailangan din ba namin magpa-circumcise katulad ninyo? Eh, ngayon, ito ang problema. Walang nakasulat sa Biblia kung ano yung prescription ni Jesus. Walang nakasulat. So, anong ginawa nila? So, nag-meeting si Peter, si Paul, tsaka yung mga ibang top leaders nung church nung unang panahon. Pinag-usapan nila, so ano bang kailangan natin gawin? Ano ba? Kasi bakit importante yung circumcision? Imagine this, kung ikaw ay 30 years old na, tapos gusto mong magpabaptize as a, as a Jesus follower, Aba, teka lang. Mag-iisip ka, teka lang. Masakit yan, na. Gusto ko lang naman fumalo kay Jesus. Bakit pa ako magpapatuli? Pangalawa, ito. Bakit irrelevant yon? Relevant siya kasi it can mean uh, it can mean the salvation or not of that person. Kaya kailangan sagutin nila. Eh, wala sa Biblia. Wala sa nasusulat. So ngayon, consult sila. Ito na, yung magisterium, yung, yung, yung bishops, yung Pope. Technically, si Peter ang Pope nung time na yon. So, nag-usap sila. Ano bang gagawin natin dito? Ayun na. Nag-decide sila. Okay. Ito ang decision. Hindi nyo na kailangan magpa-circumcise. Ang kailangan lang, mabaptize kayo by water. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Ganon. So, yun ang gift ng Catholic Church. Years and years, centuries and thousands of years ang binilang para ano, lahat ng mga paniniwala natin, including the creed, pinag-isipan, pinag Chinek sa Biblia, pag wala sa Biblia, ano kaya ang spirito ng, ng, ng ano sinasabi ng Holy Spirit sa atin? And then they decide. Ang problema ng mga kapatid natin, eh, hindi naman problema, but this is what they are missing. Sila, pag binasa nila yung Bible, oh, ito yung interpretation ko, ito na yan, ito talaga yan. Tayo hindi, may nagsasabi sa atin, meron tayong ba- check and balance. Teka lang, ito ba ay ito ba ay tama o hindi? Check natin saan? Dun, sa mga sinabi ng mga Santo Papa, ng Magisterium, ng Bishops. Kaya, pag naniwala ka, klaro sa'yo, pinag-isipan ng mabuti yan. Am I making sense here? Hindi kung sino-sino lang kung ano yung maisipan niya. Ah, okay, ito na lang. Okay, maganda to. Palitan natin, wag na tayong magpare. Gawin na lang natin babae yung, yung mga, lahat na lang pwede maging pare. 
pinag-iisipan po yan. Hindi po yan basta-basta. Am I making sense here? That's why it's a great gift to be a Catholic. Kaya ito po ang my personal request to you is this. Please come here on time. 9 a.m. po ang misa natin. Kung kayo po ay nagmimisa sa inyo kanya-kanyang parokya, well and good. Pero kung kayo po ay hindi po nakakapagmisa sa kanya-kanyang parish, please be here 9 o'clock so that you can get the fullness of what the church has to offer, what Jesus has to offer through the Eucharist. Amen? Ayan. Anyway, when we say, uh, let's proceed. I believe in the communion of saints. Are you learning so far? Yes. Sorry, ah, medyo, medyo intellectual tong usapan natin ngayon. Ah. Hinuhugot ko tuloy lahat ng mga pinag-aralan ko sa theology nung nag-masters ako. But I believe you should know this because this is a wonderful thing to know. Amen? When we say, I believe in the communion of saints, here's what we mean. In CCC, the Catechism of the Catholic Church 962, it says there, we believe in the communion of all the faithful of Christ, those who are pilgrims on earth, the dead who are being purified, and the blessed in heaven, all together forming one church. So tatlong parte daw, pilgrims on earth, the dead who are being purified, and those who are blessed in heaven. Yan po yung tinatawag natin, the three parts of the church. The first part is the church triumphant. Sabi nga triumphant. Ito yung mga nasa langit na. The saints in heaven. Yung mga kaibigan natin, mga mahal natin sa buhay na yumao na. And they were there in heaven. Ito lang ang clarification po. Tayo po, we don't worship saints, ha? We don't worship Mama Mary. We worship Jesus alone. Klaro po dapat yan, ha? In fact, Paul said, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus. Klaro po sa atin yan. But here's the question. Can we ask the saints in heaven to pray with us? Siyempre. Pwede. Ang iba tinatanong, Brother, why pray to the saints? Why don't you pray to the, directly to God? Ito po ang sagot ko dyan. Yes, you can pray directly to God. In fact, you should pray directly to God. But it does not harm when you let others pray for you. As His child, you have a direct line to the Father. You, you have a direct line to your Jesus, your brother. You are not required to pray to Mary and the saints. But here's the follow-up question. Why did God give us the saints? Why did God give us Mary? Tanong nyo sa akin, bakit? Kasi naturally, when you follow Jesus, He always brings along His family. Kasama yung mga kapatid niya, yung nanay niya. And kaya minsan nalalabuan ako, bakit ba yung iba galit na galit ka kay Mama Mary? Eh, ikaw, kapag kamahal mo yung isang tao, tatanggapin mo yung nanay niya, tatay niya, tama ba? Kahit nga inis na inis ka sa binan mo, di ba, tanggap mo pa rin siya. Bakit? Kasi mahal mo yung tao. Kung mahal natin si Jesus, why can't we not love the mother, his brothers and sisters? Am I making sense here? And so, in fact, yung iba sa atin at yung iba nating kapatid na mga Kristiyano, they are also doing this intercession thing asking somebody to pray for them. For example, lumalapit sila sa kaibigan nila, can you pray for me? Actually, ganun din yung ginagawa natin when we go to the saints. Bakit tinatawag natin yung santo? Can you pray for us? Diba? That's the beauty of the church triumphant. And the wonderful thing about this is this. James 5.16 says, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Eh, yung mga nasa langit, ang babait niyang mga yan. So that's why their prayers are much more effective. Amen? Second part of the church is this, the church penitent. Sabi nyo nga, penitent. Sino po itong mga ito? These are the saints in purgatory. Sabi nyo nga, purgatory. Brother, purgatory, ba't ba kayo naniniwala sa purgatory na yun? Wala naman yung salitang purgatory sa Bible. Ay totoo, wala po talaga ang salitang purgatory sa Bible. Eh, pero wala din yung salitang Trinity, wala rin salitang Easter, wala rin salitang Christmas. Kaya kung ganun ang ang iyong line of thinking, huwag ka na lang din mag-celebrate ng Pasko. Huwag ka rin tatanggap ng Aguinaldo. Di ba? Eh, brother, in fact, yung Bible eh. Yung salitang Bible, wala sa Bible yan. Bakit natin ginagamit? Ba't natin pinaniniwalaan? But you see, what I mean is this. The essence of purgatory is actually in the Bible. The roots of it is in the Bible. In the book of Revelations, it says there, next slide, 
Nothing impure will enter heaven. And you see, God forgive. Tignan niyo ako, ah, this is very important kasi this is the core of our or of our faith. God forgives us completely. No doubt about that. But I want you to know that salvation is different from sanctification. Sabi nyo nga salvation. Sanctification. Hindi porket you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, ay eh saved ka na. Katama, saved ka na. Pero, hindi na nga nga hulugan nun na lahat ng mga kasalanan mo na susunod, ay eh walang epekto. That's why for us Catholics, the moment that you receive Jesus in baptism, yes, you are saved, but you need to be sanctified. Kailangan kang linisin ng Diyos. Because the goal of believing in Jesus is not just salvation. The goal of believing in Jesus is for you to become just like Jesus. Are you still following me? E paano kung salbahi ka pa? Kung ngayon 10,000 times kang magmura, tinanggap mo na si Lord. Okay, does that mean yung mga susunod mong mura ay eh, hindi na masama yun? Not necessarily. You see, ito, kaya nga kailangan may sanctification. 10,000 kahapon, ngayon 9,999 na lang. Ngayon, nine, bukas, 9,995. Hanggang sa maging kamukha ka ni Kristo. Am I making sense here? That's why I believe purgatory starts here on earth. Bakit? Ngayon palang pinupurify ka na ni Lord. Tapos, ito ang maganda. Tama niyo sa akin ano? Eh, paano ito? Pinupurify ka ni Lord. Nakilala mo si Lord sa feast. Pabait ka na ng pabait. Ito ang problema. Namatay ka na bukas. Hindi ka pa sobrang bait. Wala, hindi ka pa kamukhang-kamukha ni Lord. Ito ang maganda. Meron purgatory. Meron pa rin chance si Lord to purify you. Because in essence, ito ha, in a nutshell, purgatory is God's mercy. Na kahit na hindi ka pa naging kamukha ni Jesus dito sa mundong ibabaw, ay may chance ka pa. Nakita niyo kung gaano kabait ang Diyos? Nakita niyo kung gaano kaganda yung pinaniniwalaan natin pananampalataya? Am I making sense here? Are you loving this? Ang ganda po. Tapi mo katabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, I love to be a Catholic. And here's another thing about being in the Catholic Church. Dito po sa feast na pansin nyo, welcome po lahat dito sa feast. Bakit? The word Catholic means all-embracing. Sabi nyo nga all-embracing. Lahat niyayakap natin, lahat welcome. The unchurched are welcome. Kahit masama ka pa, wini-welcome natin dito. Yung mga taong niloko ng asawa nila, wini-welcome natin dito. Yung asawang manloloko, wini-welcome natin dito. Yung kabit nung manloloko, wini-welcome natin dito. Because we all believe that we need God. We need to be purified. In fact, alam nyo ba, meron tayong isang servant, Muslim. Muslim ha? He found God here at the feast. Pero hindi niya sinasabi na Muslim siya. Bakit? Kasi hahanapin siya ng nanay niya. Baka malaman, patay siya. Pero alam niyo, tinitinan niyo, sino ba kayo mukhang Muslim dito? <laughs> Judgmental niyo. <laughs> Ganun po. Lahat dito all embracing. Meron din tayong member na iglesia ni Kristo. Pero dito, binabago ni Lord. Yung isa, nagpa-convert na, naging katoliko na. Pero dito hindi natin pinipilit. Napansin nyo dito sa feast, walang pilitan. Because that's what Catholic means. All embracing. Kahit na magbago siya o hindi. Amen? Third and last is this. I'm about to end. The church militant. Sabi nyo nga militant. The church militant are the saints on earth. Tayo po yun. Why militant? Because we are an army that follows a commander-in-chief named Jesus Christ. And we are trying to conquer the world with God's amazing love. And you see, if you have turned over your life to Christ, in God's eyes, you're already a saint. Tapingin mo katabi mo, sabi mo sa kanya, you're a saint. Gusto nyo practicein natin? Yung pangalan ninyo, kabitan nyo ng saint. Halimbawa, Saint Velden. Sige nga, sabihin yung pangalan niya. One, two, three, go. Lakas na nyo. Ba't kayo natatawa? Parang, hindi bagay. 
Kahit Bernard ang pangalan mo. Di ba? Saint Bernard, parang aso lang, di ba? <laughs> Tingnan mo ulit yung katabi mo. That person is a saint. In fact, you are a saint in training. This is your identity. This is your destiny. And this, the church, is your family. Amen? Can I invite you to stand up? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you have a family. Woo! Were you enlightened today? Ang dami bang naklaro, di ba? Ang sarap maging katoliko, maging kristyano. Ngayon pagka binasa natin yung Apostles' Creed, may kurot na sa puso. Bakit? Klaro sa atin eh. Amen? And before I end, here's my request to you. Kanina pa ako sabi na sabi, you have a family, you have a family. Pero alam nyo, tingnan mo yung katabi mo. When was the last time na kinamusta mo siya? I want you to turn to somebody, kakilala mo man o hindi, and here's my request to you. I want you to pray for one another. Ask that person, what is something that I can pray for you? Tapos in turn, share mo din sa kanya kung ano yung gusto mong ipagdasal. Kasi alam nyo, ang problema natin, minsan ito, sinasarili natin yung pananampalataya natin. Feeling natin, ay okay naman, nagpe-pray naman ako kay Lord. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. That's all that matters. Let me tell you this. Huwag mong kayanin mag-isa. May problema ka, meron kang dinadala. You don't have to carry it alone. Meron kang kasama. You have a family. And minsan yung iba, minsan nagtatampo, eh, nanay ko, yung tatay ko, iniwan na ako, yung mga kapatid ko, inaaway na din ako. Ito maganda. That's the beauty of the church. Your brothers and sisters here, they are your family. The saints in heaven, they are your family. Kaya no matter what happens in your life, even if all the people in your life has turned against you, you still have a family. You are never alone. Amen? For the next two minutes, here's what I would like you to do. In silence, bulong nyo lang sa katabi nyo. What can I pray for you? Kahit isa lang. Tapos, after that, when we're ready, I will lead you into a prayer. Then after that, we will pray for one another. Okay lang po ba? Let's turn this whole tent into a loving family. Healers of the broken people around us. Amen? Let's heal each other and be healed in return. So for the next two minutes, I want you to turn to your partner. Ask your partner, what can I pray for you? Kung kayo'y mag-asawa, chance nyo na yan para malaman na laman ng puso ng asawa ninyo. Kapatid, kaibigan, ganyan din. May dinadala yan, hindi lang halata. Yung kabilang partner naman, pakinggan mo. Now, can I lead you into prayer? Together, let's make the sign of our beautiful faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, I lift up to you every person in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the creed. Thank you, Lord, for this family called the church. And Lord, some of us here, we may not be blood-related, but Lord, in spirit, we are related because of what you have done in the cross. And so, Father, today, we ask you 
and all the saints in heaven, including Mama Mary, to pray for us, to pray for our prayer petitions. For we believe, Lord, that you are the Lord of all. We believe, Lord, that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in our midst. And Lord, we know that the prayer of a righteous person and the prayer of a selfless person praying for one another is most potent because we are praying selfless prayers. We are not praying for ourselves. We will be praying for our dear friends. And so today, oh God, we ask you that you listen and answer our prayers as we pray for one another. You may now begin you may place your hands on the shoulder of your friend. Sige lang, touch the person beside you, yang prayer partner mo. And you may now begin praying a silent prayer for that person. Listen to our prayer, Jesus. When you're done praying, yakapin mo lang na mag maigpit yung katabi mo. Paramdam mo lang yung pagmamahal ng Diyos sa Kanya. Nararamdaman niyo ba yung pagmamahal ng Diyos ngayon? And to end our talk as we go, before we go into worship, can we all just recite our creed with full conviction and say it as if you have never said it before, with full heart, with full spirit. And together, let's pray our Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord. For we have a family. Remember that everything that we have shall be built on love. On Jesus and on his church. Continue singing to him. <laughs>